There I am. Apparently I knocked my microphone when I was setting up, and it got... Suffer couldn't find it, but hey, we sorted it early. So yeah, look at that. Technical problems sorted within like a minute. Um, how y'all doing? It's Christmas weekend winters. Uh, I want you to know my sound. Yeah, it's sorted. <laughs> you guys are a little bit lagged, but it does get sorted. I uh, want to say hi to the last, uh, or say goodbye maybe, to the last weekend with the uh, my, my baseball cap because I do have a haircut booked for tonight. That should be But yeah, for tonight, what I wanted to do, or today, I, is I, was, I had this whole thing planned. I got up early. I prepared some notes. And then, <coughs> sorry, I went on Twitter. And what do I see? Except that uh, Peter Gosian has tweeted out another garbage series of lies um, in that he wrote in conjunction with James Lehman and uh, some other hack um, whose name I forget because he's... Okay, all right, that's not very nice, but, in, and honestly, I, I, I don't know why I have to show courtesy and deference and professionalism to people who are poor and who are hurting people. So yeah, I don't feel too bad. Because um, they're literally putting out like racist so let's let's take a look at i'll give you a little bit of the backstory yeah peter b um most famously known for his academic fraud uh james Lindsay as well they both um submitted papers and you know what's often left out of the grievance studies uh discussion is the fact that when you go through peer review your peers give you advice on how to improve your writing in order to make it acceptable and so they pretend like they submitted an article and it just got it when the fact is what well, they submitted, it got rejected, and they refined it based on people who knew what they were talking about to try to get it some credibility. So they stole other people's ideas, basically, and manipulated the academic process in order to degrade it. And I don't see why I have to have respect for any of these. So another reason why I have no respect for them is that they put out garbage like this. So let's take that. So this was the best I could do. because I have this... I I'm sorry for the... Oh, 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 let me transition. There we go. I'm sorry for how horrible this looks. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I know that this is not really the best looking or most organized. Bought myself a uh, document, but th they put it together. Um, <laughs> DN fan, how you doing? Wee Wee Jumbo, hello. And Lucky Wanderer. I also saw Sib, I think. And Angus. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? All right, a couple months ago. These uh, hacks put out, so I'll have to zoom in on it. They put out a document that purports to be a shortcut for what people who advocate for what social justice rhetoric, people who want, I don't know, equality, basically. Those kinds of really uh, controversial. Here we go. Um, so, who, let's, like, yeah. Gilly Goat Bogosian Inland. Three men who have a very racist. They have a, a very much a white privilege perpetuate the sort of hierarchy status quo. I mean, look at like Lindsay doesn't have James Lindsay doesn't even have a degree in the relevant fields. He's never like earned a master's, never published something reputable, right? When he wasn't lying and manipulating the process. And yet he is, you know, gets to get his because he's riding his white privilege and his male privilege, a bunch of other white guys and also white women and and people who want to hear this rhetoric just assume he knows what he's talking about. Um, and they're kind of basically like the poster child for what is prob what is the problem with adhering to the white male patriarchy. You get a bunch of sub par, um, unprofessional, inadequate content, and they just get away with it. So um, this garbage was a mess. Anyway, so first of all, we'll just look at it. It's, it's a series of lies. So one, they claim that it's responding to social justice rights. But if you go and look anywhere, anywhere for a source, a cheat sheet for policymakers, where is the source for this? Where, 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 what books are they using? Who are they quoting? This is stuff they literally just made up. They just made this up. There's no quotes here. Uh, Kevin and I did a big thorough, uh, we went through this line by line. For instance, the number of times they just copy and paste this neo-racist, racism reborn is progressive. Just word salad. There is no attempt even to 
um, definite, like to um, uh, define terms here. You know, neo racist policies and just the repeat racism reborn as progressive. It's it's basically like creationist. There's no value. There's no content. There's nothing that you can map onto reality through like. A so and they're also it's just oh there's so many like logical fallacies when it comes to um a appeal to motive fallacy. I know I notice now when I when I pound on my desk my camera shakes so I have to be careful of that. Yeah, they um they literally just do appeal to motives a lot. And um, there's a lot of value-laden stuff in here that has, again, no basis. So, um, for instance, let's just look at this terrible phrase. Diversity. What they. What they mean is. They is never defined other than social, apparently, like some kind of social justice. So that's a problem. Weasel words. Right? This is right up there with Trump saying, oh, a lot of people are saying. They are saying. Right? It's the same garbage. It's the same non-empirical, facetious propaganda. So diversity, what they mean is identity-based approach to society. I'm going to say that actually when you look at the white supremacist structures that were instituted by white men back in the 1600s and that they preserved and passed on and reproduced and modified to fit to the, you know, their modern, whatever their modern version was, that was identity-based approaches to society. Making whiteness a criteria of making your white skin a criteria to get citizenship in the 1790 Immigration Act, that was identity, identity based. And what really annoys me is that you, like, white people, ones of us who basically go, yeah, racism was a problem, you know, slavery was, that was bad, and um, Jim Crow wasn't very nice. Oh, yes, tut, 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 all of those lynchings and all that discrimination, all that hate all that bias, but then we passed the Civil Rights Act and now everyone is just legally free and equal. So, you know, racism doesn't exist anymore. If you have to sue someone to get your basic rights honored as a person, that is not equality. That is a, like, civil rights legislation and allowing people to sue for discrimination doesn't actually solve the problems of discrimination. It provides people who have been discriminated against a remedy, but you've already been discriminated against. Do you see what I'm saying here? You're not, it's, it's only reactive to the problem. And you can say, yeah, some companies are going to want to be, um, you know, risk averse and not want to get sued. But yeah, that's in an optimal situation. People are motivated by a lot of other things. Then, you know, like a, a fear of being sued might be more racist than they are worried about that. So this was, this was garbage. This was all kinds of garbage. Garbage left, right, and center, up, down, side to side, through and through, just destroyed absolutely destroyed. and i think we've got here i'll you remember hey y'all who's else who's joined us since we camera froze oh good you can hear me but my camera ain't working it's weird i don't know what's up with my camera well let me see if i can uh try to sort that out while i talk you know uh, I am just faced with problems today. All right. Um, I don't know what to do with the fact that my camera. So anyway, I guess you guys can see. Yeah, weird. You can see my screen, but you can't see me. All right. So what might be the easiest thing to do is I will just take myself off screen. I don't know what to, uh, yeah, frozen. I don't know what to do about that. So I will just uh, put, put you all over here. You just will hear me, you won't see me. I don't know what to do about this show. So we're just gonna keep going. Because the show must go. All right, so that was the original garbage piece that they, and I think it might be worth our time to just quickly look at um, Mark Lamont Hill destroying this stuff. Because uh, I, one, it was a it was a beautiful thing, but also it shows the um, turning it on and turning it off again. Yeah, Fox of Fate. I'm worried about. I don't know that that's going to work during a live stream, so it's just easier to not deal. With it. Yeah, webcams can be finicky. I had some real problems with my. So we'll see. 
Um, anyway, so we're gonna go, we're gonna look up uh, Mark Lamont Hill and James Lindsay. That's the one. And he just owns him. And James Hill, damn it. James Lindsay, yeah, that was it. Responding to social justice. Pause. Don't oh, run, Ed. don't, 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 no, no, buy it. Let me get my headphones on. Make sure you guys can hear. I think I've got the desktop audio. But what is very apparent from listening to these guys, or to listening to Mark Lamont Hill, who knows what he's talking about, because he's actually studied this, and he is thoughtful when it comes to these topics, um, that he has a, a deeper understanding of the ways that James Lindsay is frankly misusing. He's he's misusing these terms, and um, so he goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Goes in, barely gets a word in because he's powered. And see how far we've gotten in here. Oh, sound on. Do you know where the? Oh, that's. That ideology went in Germany. You know where that led to? Oh, this is him pretending to be offended by the word folks. In the German version, Volks, as opposed to the English word folks. Press of circles. So I don't want to I don't want to so throw one out there and make me, people make people wait. So let, let, no, let, let, let me just I, pause here I, just I, so we can take a commercial break. OK, they're taking a commercial break. Back. Well, it went for the you mean a, in a conversation about whether or not these are legitimate spaces uh, to engage, or, or, or rather, what, le what what legitimate engagement looks like with questions of social justice language. So I want to keep I want to keep the conversation going. Peter, you were you were going to. No, we're not going to listen. Peter. Trying to get to where Lamar. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark Lamont. Game, I think, becomes a kind of caricature of it. Yeah, there we go. We'll start there, and I'll see if I can sort out my cam while. You... While it's walking through the world. We, we have choices, we have options. No, no, no race theorist argues that we don't. And so the idea here that systemic racism is just some kind of institutional blame game, I think, becomes a kind of caricature of it. Uh, I'm gonna say one more, and then I wanna I want give you two a chance uh, to, to respond here. Um, you said that critical race theory says that is the view that all disparities in group outcomes are due to racist systems, right? Again, no, I mean, one of the most enduring, if not the most enduring term from critical race theory has been intersectionality. And so when we look at uh, people like Kimberly Crenshaw and others who talk about the intersections of race and gender and geography and ability status, I think it'd be ho it's wholly inaccurate to suggest that everything, even in critical race theory, is chalked up to race. How would you respond to those two criticisms? I mean, the intersectionality one's actually very easy to, to respond to. Yeah, of course, she's talking about other intersecting systems of power, but all of these systems of power are said to work the same way. And you mentioned- <laughs> They all work the same way, so they're the same thing. No. I mean, just because, uh, let's say, you know, like an authoritarian power structure in one country and a monarchy might have similar structures of how they organize power, doesn't mean a monarchy is the same. There are, are elements of difference in terms of how they are organized or their meanings or their values um, or their justifications, right? But the actual use of violence and threats and various other things um, might be similar. Uh. Structural, so I'm very glad you did that because um, structural refers to, in this case, one of two things, language as in structuralism, as in as interpreted through postmodernism, which means that we are actually products of our, contingent products of our, of our culture and times, which therefore means that we don't actually have agency that, because we are actually just socialized into the conditions that we're in and we mistake that which we think is, uh, is true uh, when it's actually just- I just think like, I don't know why um, James Lindsay even has this microphone in front of his face because it's clearly not the microphone he's using. That this thing right here, this thing right here, is not the microphone he's using. He sounds like he's talking in a box. I'm sorry. It's just, it's true. It's real. This is like he set this all up and then attached the wrong audio file because there's no way that this mic with any quality whatsoever makes it sound. Yeah, I know the camera's working. I fixed it. <laughs> I, while you guys are watching the video, it didn't just happen. I fixed it. So, thank you. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay. So he's trying to talk his way here, trying to pretend that he's very smart. But um, Mark Lamont Hill is... Manifestations of those systems of power. Uh, it also can refer to the structures of society in a Marxian superstructure way, like Karl Marx, as put forth... <laughs> That's a Karl Marx. Gotta specify that. 
Oh, by the way, can I just annoy James? I, I'm really happy I got my... Uh, I went to the post office the other day because I thought I was getting in a D&D &D book, which still hasn't arrived, but that's all over. And I'm so happy because I got my... This is what a feminist looks like. T-shirt. So... Yes, I was the kid in the class when I knew the, the right answer, bouncing. So I also have a, another one that's a hoodie that says just... Is he using your mic? Yes, Sib, I think so. It sounds like he's talking in from inside of a cardboard box. <laughs> or say by Herbert Marcuse in the 1960s, father of the new left, who talked about- So here he is, he's just dropping names, dropping buzzwords, trying to throw it all together in a big postmodernist uh, sort of mess in order to confuse people while also sounding No idea what. About the fact that everybody who this. doesn't have a critical awakened consciousness, in other words, everybody who's not a critical theorist, whether it's critical race, critical gender, critical queer, critical disability, critical fat, whatever you want to have it, is actually just being influenced in his thought through the heteronymous interests of corporate <laughs> capitalism and, uh, and, and uh, consumerism and the various systems of power, including racism, sexism, et cetera, that manifest throughout society. So actually, we don't have agency under critical race theory or any of its philosophical <laughs> <Correct>. antecedents. <laughs> no. Just wrong. That's correct. So, so, no, I was Gozian, to tell. The Gozian is such a hack, and he's a coward. Look at him. Mm -hmm. He's 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 literally like a professor of philosophy who can't write a decent article. Um, like I, I reviewed that philosophy thing that he put out with James, which was garbage. Such. Oh, you got um your big order on uh, has been hotel shirts and one hoodie. Oh, good. So, in fact, you're critical theorist, which is an incredible irony because you actually have to sacrifice all of your agency to think otherwise, which is how it chills. Like literally, these guys are making up lies about what the ideas are, and then when they're corrected, they're like, "No, I'm I'm right." Like, no, no, dude, you're lying. Like, listen to someone who knows. No, 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 I'm a white man. I don't have a degree in this field. I haven't actually like you know studied this properly to understand all the context, and I'm definitely seeing it through a, a cognitive bias where I'm doing selectively pulling in information in order to cast it in the worst light but james would say hey i've got white skin and i pee standing up so you know um that's all i need i don't need to work i'm a white man i can just get why but get by my white privilege and that's what he's doing he's literally getting by in his white and male privilege. freedom of thought and freedom of speech because you have to be critically conscious or else you have false consciousness and are therefore not acting out yourself you again there's all kinds of just throwing in a bunch of like garbage Anyway, actual agency. Okay, so, and it, of course we're running out of time, but I'm going to respond just so the audience and the people who watch this on clips don't think that Please. I don't have a response. Mm -hmm. First of all, sure, sure. The, 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 your, your counter is predicated on the idea that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between critical race theory and critical theory as sort of produced from the Marxist tradition, from the Frankfurt School, etc., when in fact critical race theory has certainly connections to any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also connected to critical legal studies, which was not committed mm -hmm. to sort of inheriting all of the all of the kind of uh, uh, Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas that you're talking about. And again, Correct. even the type of Marxism you're talking about is a very narrow, thin sort of crude Marxism, or even what we call vulgar Marxism, which uh, alleges a relationship between economic base and cultural superstructure that is one to one, when in fact, what most Marxists have argued, and what certainly most Marxists post uh, the, the mid part of the 20th century have argued, is that it's a much more complicated dynamic than even Gramsci himself argues that in the prison notebooks about this idea of hegemony and how it happens along a compromise equilibrium, whereby some people, or, or, or whereby on the one hand, we absolutely are, 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 are hostage to the economic conditions around us, but on the other hand, uh, structures and states and institutions also appeal to our own desires and, and our own interests and our own needs. It's a much more dynamic and complicated relationship than you're talking about. And as far as sort of structures, the, 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 again, you're, you're making a connection between structures in terms of institutional structures that I was talking about and the particular type of structures that, say, a Saussure would we'll be talking about in terms of structuralism. That's not actually what I was talking about. <laughs> and that's not what most people are talking about when they talk about systems and structures. Again, that's a very tight correlation you draw. But and if we were to accept that correlation, then sure. But it's not only that we're not accepting it, it's actually not what we're talking about. And postmodernism <laughs> plays this, upon actually. a range of things. Oh, look at this. James is, oh, look, the black man knows what he's talking about. Yeah, James, he does. He's a professor. He's such a racist. So look at the like, little contempt on his face. Shout out your clan robe. I'm sorry? I said you know a lot about know. this, actually. That you know a very you know yeah. a very large amount about this, very much detail. And so I have a question for you then. Do you accept So he's not leaving listening? Not, so yeah, this is these are the racists that we're dealing with. These guys who are holding 
the racist status quo, who are defending white privilege, who are basically um, making the case that if you don't accept the current unequal status quo, you're the problem, uh, that liberty and justice is really just for some. So this is the perspective. They have an agenda to discredit attempts at real equality in society. So this was our first attempt, and they got a whole bunch of pushback. So Bogosian was like, "Ah, oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna fix this. We've got some feedback on this, and as a consequence, we're gonna take a look at it and we're gonna rework it." I was like, "Okay, we're gonna go back and actually do like a you know check sources. They're gonna get accurate quotes. They're gonna make some attempt to make this look a bit more professional. Right now, this is this thing right here is something like you know you could scroll you'd see." Like scrawled on a bathroom stall or something, way too much time on their hands and no basis in. And what they brought instead was we're gonna have a look at it. So I've got the old one here. You can always, in this case, you know, zoom in and look at what the original one. So take a look. Zoom, 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 zoom. At what they did this time. So now we knew that they said. That it was a problem, like there was problems, there were problems in the last week. Let's see what they did. So first of all, they got responding to social justice rhetoric, a cheat sheet for policymakers. They put that at the top of this. Because last time, this was, they put it at the bottom. Kind of hard to see, but it is right. Uh, so yeah, they wanted to make sure the policymakers knew, rather than like putting their names up on top of it and the the association, they decided to rework that, uh, and 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 not so much associate themselves. Oh, it's a it's a cheat sheet for policy. So have they done any better of a job? Oh, you can't see it now because I'm in the way. So move this up. All right, I forgot that I put my screen. I have to zoom in. I, I really don't like it whatsoever. But we're going to work with what we have because. Hope that finally this. Okay, so social justice, what they, who, what they mean. Still no mention on who they are. This is just responding to social justice rhetoric. Um, never, like anyone who wants social justice, apparently, is evil. Unless you're upholding the um, cis normative white male patriarchy, is and a straight hetero. Yeah, I said heteronormative. It's, it's it can't be. You must be evil. Social justice. What they mean is group entitlements. No, it's not. Just we want justice. You know, as Americans, when we get up and we p pledge with liberty and justice for all. Do you think that what people are saying is with liberty and group entitlements for all? No, the concept of justice means that you have the same, you live, um, yeah, in this case, justice would be that your life in America would not be affected by any of your, like, statuses, who you love, your physical, um, your body, what it looks like, in terms of disability, disability, but your ethnicity, your ethnic background, any of that, it wouldn't matter. I'm cutting out from time. I don't know what to do about that. I'm clearly having tech issues. I might have to uh, check my computer. Files on. Apologies that I'm cutting out. I don't know what to do about that. Um, all right, so never saying who they are. Which, okay, group entitlements, which is the reframing of particular political demands as universal moral imp a denial of just rewards to individuals who follow the law. So when you talk about social justice, who are the people who are, are experiencing the injustice? It tends to be, you know, because of the framework, outgroup association. So generally women, generally people of color, and then we can talk about transphobia, homophobia, whatever else, right? So the idea that social justice, wanting a just society for every American, is basically denying the just rewards undefined, the individuals who follow the law. Um, you're pitting again, you know, like basically you're saying white men follow the law and everyone else is just doesn't want. I mean, that's kind of what I'm reading. Now, did they actually change this at all from their last garbage definition? Find out. Or did they just cut and paste? 
All right, let's find it here. Social justice, what they mean is group entitlements, which is a denial of social and cultural differences. Oh, all right, they left, so they left that part out. Big improvement. And maybe I can uh, run this one and make my camera a little bit smaller. Oh, now I'm just gone entirely. How exciting. No, did I freeze up again? No, okay. I'm trying to uh, work on this. I'll see if I can do that. So yeah, w when you look at this, what's what's really here? They All they did was drop off one little part of it, but otherwise it's the same damn bias thing as, as every other time. This, is, this, isn't, this isn't reworking it. This isn't making it better. This is just streamlining your propaganda, your racist propaganda. Um, so no, there's there's the reframing of particular political demands as universal moral imperatives, and then the denial of a, of just rewards to individuals who follow the law and act fairly. So they left out one of their lies and they swapped the order of their other. Never defining their terms, never providing a source. Easy, easy, easy. All right, so nothing, nothing in that is true. Critical race theory, what they mean is belief that people of European descent make society racist for their own benefit. It's not, well, first of all, if you want to have this conversation, let's have this conversation. Is it a belief or was it, is it a historical fact? I'm looking at history and I see, well, like, just go back to the 1960s. We're not talking about that long ago. And at that point, we were talking about, like, legalized apartheid in America. It was white people who decided they wanted to be segregated, and it was black Americans who had to fight for just basic recognition of their humanity, right? So it's not the belief that people of European descent made society racist for their own benefit. It is the historical fact. And we're still living with that legacy. People who are indoctrinated into white supremacist propaganda as part of their public school education, which was the aim of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, was to put pro-Confederacy and pro-white supremacist talking points as fact into public schools, right? That is kind of, you know, the racism they're talking about. They made society, they wanted society to be racist. They wanted society to be safe. And now, so lies. It's lies. White men lying. White men lying about other people, in this case which is the view that racism is baked into the system and inescapable. Well, actually, no, because this would be an essentialist claim. You're saying that the systems are essentially racist and there's nothing that you can do about it. That's actually, actually the opposite. That's actually the opposite of what CRT says, which says things like race are social constructs. And the values that underpin the society and the culture can be altered, as we've seen over time. Because again, we have very different attitudes as norms um, than we did 150 years ago. So again, they can't quote people. Bogosian and Lindsay can't quote people because they're lying about what is being said. So that is a lie. Next, the view that racism is present even if no one is racist. <laughs> it's like trying to explain things to a child who is trying to, he was falling asleep. What? You can be, a, let's say you have someone who is brought into the police and she's a white woman with the best of intentions. She really wants to be part of the solution. And she thinks that this is a great way to give back to her community and help make people. She might not personally, she might personally be anti-racist. But if she walks into a police department where, let's say, the police thinks it's funny to leave Ku Klux Klan notes on the desks of black employees, of his, of his black uh, police officer underlings then you are yes yeah, she is now in a system where racism is accepted whatever her personal opinion and over time she's going to be exposed to those racist values again and again and when she goes counter to that there might be pushback she might be pressured to adopt the institutional norms and the practices of that in, of that police department in order to fit in so yes racism can be present even though in policies and practices and procedures even if People aren't individually trying to be hostile and racist. I know that this is a slightly simple idea. Apparently, it's too much for James Lee's. Peter Bogosian's too, which is just like, how do you do philosophy and be this bad at basic? It's it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. 
No wonder you have to grift because you don't have a. No one's gonna remember you for your. The view that all disparities in group outcomes are. Again, I have no recollection. There's no citation here. I have no recollection at all of anyone who talks about CRT saying that all the disparities in group outcomes are. Because there are. There's an intersectionality. You guys don't even understand the internal, like, contradictions that you're putting here. Or at least you're not being honest. Intersectionality recognizes class, it recognizes sexism, it recognizes various kinds of other phobias. And disparity in group, group outcomes are not 100% explained by racism, and nobody ever said they were. No one. This is a straw man. These are just white man lies. Conservative, right-wing, white man lies. Peter and James and his brother buddy here. Like, they're literally just attacking people, and they're lying about people who want equality. It's very frustrating. I'm going to dip in now and see what the chat's saying. Hey, 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 because uh, I have to, I can't have everything on screen and you. So, what are y'all saying? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Barely understanding, James is barely understanding. And from, uh, Malcolm says, and from here on, he will use this as a way to say that anyone who knows more than them is evil. The clip of his axe god, godness. Peter is a trash bot, absolutely. Have you, uh, Andrew says, have you heard the argument that putting social in front of the meaning of justice? I think that was Shapiro. <laughs> oh, they just lie. The uh, people on the intersection of moral, most vectors up bigotry face the most oppression, or is this too difficult to grasp for the math PhD having axe god truth? What I love most about you is your moral clarity. I just, well, I don't know. If that, I hope that was serious. I don't know if that was a mistake. But look, if you believe in liberty and justice for all, then then you can't just say it. You have to do something about it. And what these all these guys are doing is basically attacking anyone who is trying to achieve that equality and claiming that we're the problem when all they're doing is upholding the white supremacist and the patriot. Someone needs to make a social justice cheat sheet to the cheat sheet. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Justice is bad, and okay? Yeah, that's what they're saying. When they say people of European descent, what they mean is white people. Yeah, absolutely. Which is an appeal to one's skin color as an axe mark of superiority in a dog whistle. Was that a, a, the axe mark? Was that a reference to James Lynch? Like, very embarrassing. Hot take, I think Bogosian and Lindsay are more. I would agree. I think they know that they're lying. I don't actually, here's, here's the thing. I mean, maybe we're, we're mostly in agreement, but it's like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I don't actually think they know the content well enough. Like, I really don't. I don't think they've ever made sort of charitable, you know, a, from a philosophical point of view. They've never tried to steal a man. I'm going to put it that shorthand. They've never gone and said, okay, what's the best case scenario? And I'm going to take on CRT on its best case most charitable interest. They've always lied about it. They've always lied about it. And that I think, you know, I can understand, or at least I can have some patience and jumps in and doesn't understand it, but is willing to learn. These guys are going with an agenda or ideas that are meant to expand freedom and just liberty and calling them and attacking them. <laughs> it was just a typo, but it works for me, too. Yeah, good. I think Sebastian is right. It may well mean that they're anti-Marxist nuts, but they are craving the attack. So, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, this is, like, these guys are getting by on their white male privilege. Like, honestly, what intelligent thing has James Lindsay ever contributed to the world? Right? I mean, his grievance study paper was basically stealing the ideas of credible academics to... Same with Bogosian. And he managed to get a PhD out, but this does not reflect any kind of academic rigor. He's putting his name on what is basically racist propaganda. And, uh, you know, so they don't seem to have any capacity to be honest into the See what happened with Mark Lamont Hill. He was actually, you know, he's talking to James Lindsay saying, you're comparing structuralism and structuralism, you know, these kinds of ideas of structure and structuralism, but they're two different concepts. Like, you're not even using the right words. And James Lindsay ignores all that and just wants, he's thinking of his next guy. He's not an, he's not intellectually, or just, you know, um, there's no 
humility for the idea that he could be shown wrong based on facts and the evidence. The evidence and the facts don't matter to him. All right, so getting back to this. Um, so then they've kind of like, all right, so they did do a slightly better job this time. Like we, Kevin and I talked about how freaking garbage uh, this version was. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. It's, it's complete. Can't see, you can't follow anything, um, what they say, what they say, all this, you know, just on ethics. So they managed to, you know, they're like, okay, think about our fans and how little mental effort they put into something. We can color code it. Uh, well, I will color code it so they have a better idea. So then they kind of like thematize these concepts, critical race theory. And, oh, they changed neo-racism to neo-segregation. All right, so let's compare. Right, critical race theory, what they, the unknown day, mean is the belief that your people of European descent make society racist for their own benefit, which is the view that racism is baked into the system and inescapable. We already talked about essentialism problems. The view that racism is present even though it is racist. The view that all disparities in groups. So we did, actually. I, I went on a rant and completely forgot. the. Video. So let's go back and look. Originally wrote, how much work did they really put? There we go. <laughs> Let's find where is where is okay critical race theories over here. What they mean is race. Um. All right. So this is changed. Critical race theory. What they mean is race. Now they mean the belief that people of European. Let's say white people, cowards, people of European descent, people of European. Just say white people. I mean, come on, you already freak out enough about the fact that white people are just, like, mentioned as a group and their ethnicity, even though Fox News has been talking about the problems in the black community. You're freaking out. So they, they made up a new lie on that one. What's next? Uh, which is the view that racism is baked into the system. And it, so they didn't, they just copy and pasted that. The view that racism is present, that they copy and pasted that. The view that all disparities and group outcomes are And so they just copy and paste. Not a single effort in order to make it more intellectually. No, they just put all of their effort into the equality, equality of outcomes plus reparations, citing no source whatsoever. Equity means uh, equality of outcomes plus reparations. You racist jerk. Um, okay, so stop lying about people. Like if, why, if you can't attack someone or critique someone's argument Honestly, and destroy it, you gotta lie about it, then you know that you're on the right. So, what they said before is equality of outcomes, so they added reparations just to make white people. You gotta wait, white people scared of those ideas of reparations. Because, God forbid, that your inherited wealth over time, the fact that this, the government, you know, handed out plenty of uh, dis disproportionately benefited white people with a GI Bill. Okay, and let's talk about the Homestead Act, or just immigration generally. White people were able to have property and pass it on to their heirs for centuries. But any discussion of trying to do a formal um, leveling, a formal redress of those historic racial inequalities and actually like aggressively racist policies against everyone who was an American but wasn't white. Oh, we can't talk about that. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Trans Gamer Girl, if you want, this is, I just got this um, from Peter Bogosian on, on Twitter. So um, I don't want to like DM. You can just go go find it. Um, is it's um it's up on his sheet right now. That's where I got it from. If you just go on Twitter and go to Peter Bogosian, it's I think it's his page. I will forget. <laughs> I've got I've got to prep for the game after this. Inclusion, restricted speech, and justific and justification for purges. Uh, God, they're not even trying. No, literally, they're not even trying. I am so close to just calling this like KKK white supremacist propaganda. The idea that inclusion means restricted and, justif and justification for purges. Oh, purges like um, the Republican Party purging Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Those kind of purges. Which is making people feel welcome by banning anything they find offensive. Attack on freedom of association and speech. Oh, wait a minute. You're the ones who are attacking affinity space, right? 
where people come together and talk. You're the ones who are attacking safe space. As a, as you know, you want you want to push white men into places where they have like no connection with, the, but they just feel it's their right to be there because of their white male entitlement. And an enforcement of separation of people by race neo segregation. Just lies. Absolutely. Absolutely up and down the line. Complete lies. Uh, does that, is this the same lies as before? Let's see. So we've got, uh, let's just go to inclusion. Inclusion means restricted speech and justification for purges. They literally copy and pasted and down. What took you from June to August? The formatting? Really? I could have done that in an afternoon. And you would have three, like, you still have, like, another six weeks to actually cite any sources. Cite any sources. Absolute garbage. So they, um, I wish there was a better way to do it. No, you stupid. There we go. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to have to block, block you. There's only so much space on my screen. Inclusion, restricting freedom of speech for purges, making people feel welcome by banning anything they find offensive, and an attack on... Oh, so they added a new thing about neo-segregation. There's a term they've just... Um, this is exhausting. Literally exhausting. Go through because it is such crap. Um, okay. Epox folk, what they mean is non-European people. Everything, yeah, just say white people. Which is used for neo-racist policies, re racism reborn. This is the same thing they said before. This neo-racism policies, racism reborn is progressive. Job from their life, garbage document. Implicit bias, unconscious bigotry, result of social by oppressive systems. This could maybe even be so, like something um, and this is actually like the closest thing I think they've come to not straight up lying in your head. So, um, unconscious bigotry as a result of socialization, not by oppressive systems, I would say, but I'd say within oppressive systems. And you could say that that's by too, but I think it's more than just like an active, so by here for me implies that the systems themselves are always conscious of their, um, their bigotry. And I think that your socialization within an oppressive system, even if you personally are, you know, raised to be anti-racist and racist quality, you are still going to pick up cues that are embedded within the society. What's an example of this? Um, oh, oh, I think I know why my computer was screwed up before. I, I was, it was, um, my, a, my security system was running a scam. So I think that's maybe why it was like, Crapping out and stuff because it was like going through my entire uh, disc and making sure everything. So hopefully that's been sorted. Hi, Rory Cats. Um, yeah, so you can have personally anti racist values and, and want to see a more equitable society, but you're still going to pick up those influence. An example of this might be the way that the media always, or media has a tendency, a very strong tendency, to have in in drama, in other shows, criminals being disproportionately people. Uh, like, think about Law and Order and all of those those types of shows. Um, or any, any of them, where you get the gang members, right? Or you get um, various like, types of criminality that they link to people's ethnic background reinforce that idea. <laughs> I see. And and so that is almost close. Unconscious bigotry bigotry is a result of socialization in within oppressive systems. Would, but the thing is that like maybe they just couldn't figure out a better way to lie about. It. They don't know about ac implicit bias. And, and, yeah, and, and their academics. See, Andrew, it's so hard to tell if they like. Okay, let's think about how to really dupe the rubes who pay us money. Or how can we really lie about people who want equality and justice in the world? How can we best defend the white patriarchy? Or if they're just ignorant. I mean, in some ways, I guess it's more of a compliment to think of their devious and evil. So, decolonization, removing European influence. I don't even like, all right, I'm going to be honest. I don't, 
I don't deal with decolonization topic very often. So let's see if we can find better definition. The action, uh, okay, well, technically, the action or process of a state withdrawing from a former colony, leaving it independent. Well, that's not removing European. I mean, it is kind of removing European influence, but really it's talking about the process of deconstructing colonial ideologies of Latin approach. I mean, that's, that's not the same as um, removing European influences. But let's have a look at this. Open text. C. C campus open publishing open textbooks adapted and by faculty. Yes, this is Columbia maybe. Okay, I'm gonna. So, um, if we want to understand colonization and recognize decolonization is the process of constructing ideology, superiority, and privilege of Western thought and approach. That's, that's not at all what they say. On the one hand, decolonization involves dismantling well, and addressing unbalanced power dynamics. The other, decolonization, valuing and revitalizing indigenous approaches and weeding out settler biases or that have impacted Yeah, I mean, Okay, that is nothing like removing European. What they're trying to present, present it as is almost like a, oh no, by getting rid of our superiority in colonial um, you know, cultures that um, our ancestors invaded and warped with their practice, that is removing European influence as opposed to what it actually, which is evaluating, what do they say here? Constructing colonial ideologies of authority and privilege of Western. So when white men aren't put at the center, that is from being mean to them. Okay. An attempt to delegitimize the U.S. as a colonial project. Um, again, says who? I mean, decolonization has global implications. And so again, if you're going to talk about the U.S. in particular, then you're going to need to cite some sort of Replacing universal equality with illiberal non-European tradition. Again, don't see that anywhere. Don't see that anywhere. Um, what I do see is you acting like a colonizer. <laughs> racial justice. What they mean is racial favoritism. Literally, white men built a country for themselves where they got to take any of the work, labor, assets that their white women wives or mothers or sisters had because they denied them legal. They denied, they called native people savages and excluded them from any kind of legal rights. Even the idea that they could own property, they were denied that by the Supreme Court. That decision, that's pretty. And they enslaved an entire like continent of people, stole their labor, their lives, enslaved their children for generations. But if we try to rebalance that, if we try to actually adopt the ideas of equality and um, justice, that's racial favoritism. Taking away all of the privilege and status and legal rights and powers that white men gave themselves at the expense of everyone else. If you try to fix that, that's being mean to white men. And white women too, what does I like for that part of it? But just The lies. Um, and then neo-racist, quote, you know, racism reborn is progressive group stereo. Just That's just nonsense. Literally just garbage. Such, like, there's nothing there that has any, ever, let alone grounding in reality. Um, so I guess, you know, I, I've been able to rant on this for almost an hour. Um, microaggressions. Oh, is that a new one? Let's just see. Microaggressions in the old version. Might have updated it. Oh, they've added some new categories. All right. So before they had environmental justice, 
apparently that wasn't enough, you know, like, as, as plan bait for their their audience. So they put in micro. Uh, oh, the environmental justice is there. White privilege, white supremacy, European moral culpability. Why do you just, just say white? Moral culpability. That is such a vague and open statement, and it doesn't even differentiate between privilege and supremacy. supremacy I can think of at least two different definitions. Um, so, if you anyone who talks about white premise, white privilege, or white supremacy, um, I am doing racist scapegoating essentially against economically disadvantaged Europeans. <laughs> oh, won't someone? Let's have a bunch of rich, privileged white men in elite positions say that any attempt to point out their privilege is being mean to poor white you cowards you absolute cowards you're like basically holding up poor white people as shields against your critiques of your this is why this is neo-racist again just a copy paste job systemic racism differences in outcome are always due to bias against again lies uh, hate speech, an expression of opinion that the accuser finds objectionable, absolutely not the definition. Lies, 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 lies. Um, hate speech is actually like established in law. There are hate. There have been hate speech laws that and punishments that have been gone all the way to the Supreme Court. So there is precedence. And the idea that expressing your opinion um, and someone else finds it objectionable is hate, frankly, insulting to what people who are targeted by hate speech were. You know, the fact that, that um, yeah, you know, James Lindsay can walk through the world and when he goes into a bank, he can be expected to be treated. Goes into a restaurant, he can expect to be treated. He deals with the cops, he expects to be treated. And when anyone else in that situation, like, could be experiencing bias or hate, because of their background, who they love, whatever else. You know, denial of service, for instance, all these Christian uh, bakeries that basically like refuse service. Like he never bumps into that kind of unfair discrimination. So to conflate something as hate is grounded in hate and de and the aim of, of these slurs are to dehumanize you, right? To compare that with an opinion is basically shows that he's never had to face the kind of racist sexist aggression that other people live with um so yes i think i've gone on yeah so five to the hour i'm gonna read what you guys have to say and then we're gonna wrap it up because i got stuff to do today so what are y'all saying in the chat let me the window here i'll i'll bump you up a bit and i'll keep up the documents so you do i'm sure kevin and i will probably do something like part of a happy hour and uh yeah so let's ba -ba -da -da -da. Semper's fee better way to lie about it is such a great way to put what they're trying to do Roy cats uh or we're talking about english yeah english is well i don't know english has got its problems but german learn i think english than german in some ways more words in english but the sentence structure is a lot more basic it's just more basic than you don't have to worry about the gender. what is deprioritizing western ide ideology yeah um removing western ideology like the idea that yeah if if you don't say if you don't adopt western values as and think that hey maybe we should look at other ways people think about it oh my god you're eradicating me as a white person there's been a lot of work done in the last 40 years 50 years on trying to recognize it and reach by a variety of disciplines absolutely that's the point that um emerged out of critical race theory was that when for instance when black americans went to law schools when they were like i said when they were finally allowed to go to law schools and their talents were allowed to come forward and their able to be well more valued than in the past um you know one of the things they pointed out was it, it if you go to law school and you only study what the white men who made the decisions read you're not getting the whole story 
So yeah, you can talk about a suit between a native, a tribe, or you know, some kind of organization entity, a Native American entity, who wants to sue the, the federal government. You're going to get the opinions of the justices who wrote that decision. And the argument, you know, but you're other than like maybe the whatever transcripts there are of the oral arguments, those that other perspective is kind of erased. There's no place for that in law. And, and that's where they said, look, qualitative data is important here. Understanding people's experiences and perspectives are data that's evidence that we need to look at and consider because you can't, you, otherwise, you're only looking at one side of things. And um, yeah, this whole idea of looking to give voice to people who have been erased. It's good scholarship. It's just good scholarship. I mean, if you look, know, who wouldn't want, for instance, you know, the perspective of, of everybody throughout? I mean, if we could imagine if we had, you know, memoirs from Roman people who lived in Roman times, various economic classes, um, and, and, and understanding their perspectives and what it was like in their hopes and aspirations or um, how they were trapped or methods that were available to them to get for or the status of women, the experiences of women in history. It would be fascinating because it would fill out our knowledge. It would give us more understanding of not just like one group of people's lives, but everybody's. And that's kind of what filter has been put on a lot of academia. Um, in this case, you know, when it comes to law especially, that it's written by a very small group of people who have been socialized to a particular outlook. And even if they were to say, I'm going to imagine and try to be sympathetic to the native peoples here and imagine what it might be like for them, well, you can't. You need to go ask. You get off your chair and go and talk to people. And that's what empirical research involves, collecting data. So absolutely. Uh, Sempers Fi says, yes, and nearly every criticism I see toward anything trying to address American history, the person is making it all about themselves. I don't believe I'm a racist, so this must not be a thing. So much, yes. Sempers Fee or Fi, I don't know. Fee, Fi, Fo, Fo. <laughs> I, we have, like, it is weird. It, it, it is a cultural thing. Americans have, like, a, a system of education and a history, a narrative, a national history that it presents white men who are very flawed as flawed and white men who are very limited in terms of their scope of basic human rights, things that we would not accept. That is all glossed over in order to elevate and really protect them from criticism, coddle them, swaddle them in um, praise and glory because it's a way to legitimize our own revolution. Um, but it was a revolution of like one group of elite men against another group of elite men. Everyone else was their positions were much. <coughs> right. White women, maybe economically they didn't have to pay the stamp tax or the tea tax anymore. But they didn't gain they didn't improve their uh, political legal rights as a consequence of free black people. Their lives weren't any better. Slavery people who were enslaved. Native Americans weren't treated any better. And so we have this small group of elites where, where, and we're taught at what heroes they are. And for white people, and I think especially white men, there's a lot of identification that goes on in there. And then so when you criticize, criticize you, you act like they're, they act like they're, it's you. They're talking about you personally. And so white people who, yeah, just take it all personally, you need to point it out. Like, you don't have to defend dead racist white men. You don't have to accept everything they did and defend it. You can but it's not going to hurt their feelings. They're dead. They can be criticized. Um, yes, you would be happy to. Yes, Kevin might need to. So um, let me go back up. Uh, poor white people exist, therefore racism is imaginary. I know, they're just using human shields. Oh, but what? Oh, privilege isn't a thing. Look at, um, uh, like, poor white people. Yeah, but they still, like, even... Poor white people don't experience the same obstacles other poor people who aren't white experience. So don't hide behind them. Fix the problems. Empress Fee says, I'm reading a book about Elizabethan era and seeing so many parallels to how they viewed things, witch witchcraft and how right-wingers view things. Kind of funny, but also neat. I have met maybe two articulate opponents of RT. And even the one isn't even like a good scholar or a capable 
research, there just aren't. The vast majority of people who oppose CRT aren't capable of more than being They have no argument. They have just ad hums, guilt motive fallacies, red herring fallacies, poison. You know, it's just, it's garbage. They don't think they hate. They don't have empirical grounds for their views. They have their feet. They're a precious little snowflake of white fragility who, if you just breathe a word on their snowflakery, pointing out their, the privilege that they clearly benefit from, and I will say I benefit from it too as a white person. I'm, I'm, so I know what I'm talking about. They just melt. And then they have a screaming tantrum. So how am I supposed to respect this perspective when that perspective has nothing but bullying in it? I can't respect Peter Pagosian or James Lindsay. Want to be him? Uh, Bruce Gilly, that piece of. I I can't because you lie to my face. You lie to my face, and then when I question you, you bully me. You're basically the academic version of the clan without the burning crosses and the murder, but the intent is there. The intent is there to terrorize people and bully them into silence, so that you can or unfair. Your unfair privilege. And that is the same tactics of land use, intimidation, threat, and a, an assumption of their own superior. All right. Well, guys, um, I don't know. My, my mic says that uh, my sound is coming up into the yellow. So I have been talking a bit away from my part of the problem. Uh, I didn't. Hold on a second. I'm at the end of the show. Is that any better? Okay. All right, y'all. Um, yeah, uh, this is it. This is my hour. This is the time I'm doing. I'm sorry. To, I just wanted to look over it. And um, yeah, who is this? This is a Il, Nil Magnifico. This is the updated version of the garbage that Bogosian Lindsay put out back in June. And uh, so we're just going through it. And all it is, is they just um, reorganized their crap. But they didn't increase their forces at all. They didn't do any more work. And it's Quite surprising. So, my sounds dropped out. I apparently am having lots of problems with my. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Apparently, today's not the day to do computer. So I'm gonna get um get going and let you guys get on with your day. So uh, until next time, y'all. Um, I've been Christy. You've been awesome, and we will talk again very soon. Let me just find a way to say goodbye. Oh, no, where's the camera thingy? I'm set, set to go. All right, catch y'all later. Bye.